Now where I got cut off on the last video was I was just explaining that this from here on is definitely a mirror image reversal of what's happening here. So if you look up in here you can see that that circle is starting to form and at the end it comes together as a perfect circle. And animating in reverse is an incredibly powerful technique because often when you're sitting there scratching your head trying to figure out how in the world am I going to animate what I see in my head, it's very often easier to start with a finished product where you know it's going to and then start working backwards from there. And then all you have to do is do what I just showed, which was reverse that. And in fact, just for the heck of it, let's do the same thing for the flower. So we can make the flower grow, go from grown to not grown. And you might have noticed my flower layer looked a little bit different than yours there for a second. So I put it back to where it was, where it starts out on the first frame. Okay, so to reverse that, we click on the first frame, shift, click on the second frame, click and drag to where we want those frames to end up. Hold down the option key as we're dragging so that we keep those and not just move them. While they're still selected, we'll go to modify timeline and reverse frames. So we now also have the flower going from developed to Benjamin Button. Okay, there's something kind of frustrating that's been happening with this newest uh, version of the software, which is 2020 as of the time I'm recording this video. And that is when I do the command return, in the good old days, you used to just get the exact size of your stage, but you can probably tell that there was a lot of extra room around here that wasn't my stage. So what we're going to do on this pro project, regardless of when you watch this video, whether they fix the problem or not, is we are going to put a background on here that sits on top. And you'll see, you'll learn a couple things from doing this. Um, so we'll get started and I'll point those things out as we get going. So I'm going to go over here to my layers and I'm going to make a new layer. And um, I would name that layer like BG. Um, I probably won't be able to because of the software running, but uh, name that BG on that layer that we're going to put a background. And we're just going to pick a color that is, um, you know, probably another shade of blue will work since you've been working with blue already. Now keep in mind, you are still responsible for this stage color being set to what is on the grade sheet. So this really has no effect on the stage. Um, this actually just ends up sitting over the stage. Um, and you'll see why we're doing this as well in just a second here. So I'm going to grab the rectangle tool. I'm going to go to the tools property for that rectangle tool. Come on, cooperate. There we go. And we'll give that a blue. I'm just going to go with a full all out blue, but you can pick a lighter one if you wish. And we're going to try to draw this exactly on the stage. So if your stage is really big, you may want to command minus to go back a little bit. And get right on that corner. I'm going to click and drag, go all the way down to this very bottom corner. Try to get it as accurate as you can, but if you're a pixel or two off, probably not a big deal. I'm going to switch over to the selection tool, click on this, and we should see that that object is roughly 1600 pixels wide by 1200 pixels tall, roughly. Okay. So now we just learned a little something valuable about the layers, right? We, we know that this layer must be the bottom most layer because it's covering up right now the worm and the flower uh, where mine was drawn. Or, or actually, no, just the flower. But either way, it needs to be the very bottom layer. Okay, so my background is named and is the very bottom most layer. Now you'll see why we did this. When I command return, keep in mind, my playback will be a little bit jittery here. Um, you can see that now we know for sure how much extra we're seeing. And what that does is when we're previewing this, it gives us a, a chance to, you know, click and drag on that corner and make it the right size. 
and then it should remember it has been remembering for me that that size so that when I command return in the future it brings me there and it might again just be because this darn software but I was able to get this to go exactly before when I tried this out I got it fairly closely dialed in and you can see that once I do command return it comes back eh. <laughs> okay it's making a liar out of me uh, but anyway, the, the main thing is is that we know where your animation starts and stops, even if we are looking at it big. Because before, if we're seeing stuff that's happening off the stage, it's just kind of weird, right? So this way, we, we, we got it. It makes sense. And if Adobe did mean to do this, I kind of get it in the, the sense that it makes sense for web development, because you could think of this as being the background of your web site and that this being the actual animation. So you're getting an idea of what it would look like in that web environment. So I guess from now on for this class, we'll think of the stage color as being this super background, and then we'll make our own stage via the background layer like we did. Okay, so we're at the point now where we have the animations um, completed. Now we just need to make it so that the final product um, goes for 10 seconds of actual animation and then two seconds where there's nothing on stage. And we want to make sure that they occur in this order for my sanity, just in case you do things, well, especially if you do things other than what's on here. But either way, this will be the order that they show up. And if they stagger a little bit, that's fine. Okay, so we know for sure that the worm is the first thing and the flower is the second thing. So everything, and I just want to do something here. I'm going to drag the timeline out here so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so worm should start first, flower should start next. So we'll take the flower and we'll, we'll move it. We'll move all of the actions that occur on there. Um, so we're going to click on the first frame. We're gonna scroll down here. You can click and drag on this to get you where you wanna be. And shift and click, and then we'll go back and look. And so the worm actually doesn't start moving till, you know, like right in here. So let's click and drag on this so that there is, we'll have some overset to it, but not a lot. Okay, I'll get this out of the way here, and then we'll scrub the playhead and see what we have there. So the worm starts doing its thing about here. Then that plant shows up. It starts growing. All right, so that's all good. Let's do the same thing with the sun or the perfect shape that you use. Click on the first frame, shift click on the last frame. Click and drag all of them. Now we want to make sure that that doesn't occur until after the flower starts. And it starts about right there. And then now would be the time that we go down here and we start looking for that 10 second mark. So you can see we've got plenty, well not plenty, but we've got a full second to spare. So I will click and shift and move these around so that I get a frame that ends pretty close to 10 seconds and then we'll just extend everything to 10 seconds and turn it off. So one thing at a time, I'll show you what I've done. Okay, so looking at my timeline, which I've moved out of position just to make it a little bit easier for you to see it, you can see that the, the worm starts doing its thing, then the flower, then the sun and I basically all I did was move the sun out to about nine and a half seconds. So now to get us to exactly 10 seconds, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click here and I'm going to do an F5 and that'll extend the last frame where the sun or that perfect circle came together and it just stays there completed. Now we need two seconds where there's absolutely nothing on stage so starting on frame either you know right at 10 seconds or the frame after i'm you know not that nitpicky on it um, we will hit an f7 and remember f7 is a blank keyframe so it's the way to make sure that nothing shows so now just to complete this for the sun we'll go all the way out to frame 
uh, right here would be 12 seconds, so frame 144. 12 times 12 is 144, that makes sense. We do an F5 there to extend the blank. So we're almost good here. Now, one of the problems that I see is that my blue background stopped working at a certain point. And when I say stop working, just means we lost its visibility and I see the problem here. This lets me know that it's extended to here, but doesn't carry on here. Now, do not do this. I'll show you the wrong way to do this. I've seen people do this, and that is they just click on the last frame here, and they start doing F6. And while that works, while it extends the background, it's wrong in a couple ways. One, it, it takes too much time to do it. And two, it uses up computer resources. And the whole idea when we use animate is that's the program that we animate for web or simple graphics that we can email to people or simple animations that we can email to people pretty quickly so we don't want there to be all this data played or not played but um, you know just repeated over and over again the computer is basically saying here's a fresh slate you can add to it so each one of these is a unique item so we can either command Z to undo that, or we could click, shift click, shift F5, get rid of these, get back to where we only had right there. Everything looks good there. Now we're going to go out to 12 seconds, and we'll, we'll click here. I want to show you something, though. Instead of just doing a, a click on, flower, or on background and extending it, I'm going to click. And I'm going to drag and that will give me whatever the last frame was for the flower and extend it out as well which is actually the flower disappearing I believe we'll have to go check that out um, in a minute but now let's just take care of the worm the worm did indeed disappear as its last frame because you can see there's nothing here nothing here so we really don't need to extend that we could if we wanted to, and I guess the same would be true for the flower if it did indeed. Let's see, flower, what do you do? Yeah, you go down to nothing right there. So really, no sense even copying that nothingness. We can just go right here, hit F7, and that extends that. So whether you choose to extend a blank keyframe all the way out to the end or not, that, that doesn't matter. But just make sure that you don't use F6 repeatedly when an F5 could do. Now, I use these grade sheets to grade your project. So as you near a project, you should use this as a checklist. And you know maybe just put a little check next to everything that you know for sure you did right. If there's anything that you have a question on, whether you did it right or not, you know, ask me. Say, I, I'm not sure, you know, what what this means or you know whatever and I'll, I'll help you out um, I did just make one new little change here so length total animation 12 seconds 10 seconds of animation two seconds with nothing on stage and then I added but the background rectangle um, Yeah, and two, two seconds with nothing on stage but the background rectangle. So that means that we do want to see that blue at the end. It's going to go by for two seconds. But read through all this. Make sure you covered everything. And then, of course, take a look at your video uh, or your animation. Make sure that it looks like what you're expecting. So we're expecting 10 seconds. So count it out. And then we're expecting at the end of that 10 seconds, two seconds with nothing on the stage, which would be right here. And, um, or sorry, right here, one, two, and then we expect it to start over again. Again, my, my timing is not 100% accurate because the software is dragging it down. Each time you hit Command Return, you're going to get a brand new version of the Swift file. Remember to save your FLA files often and to make sequential files like I explained in the early video so that if something goes bad, you've got a backup copy of it. Um, and then this is a recover file that's generated automatically by Animate, which can help you if you're not doing things correctly, but get in the habit of doing things correctly. It's much less frustrating as things progress.